www.thinkingdigital.com. And in this lesson, we're going to learn about what we call the greatest common factor. Uh, again, it's one of these skills that you need to master before you can dive into fractions much further. Uh, it's one of those things that if you don't practice it, you're just going to have a problem for no really good reason because finding the greatest common factor is not hard at all. And I'll show you a bulletproof, easy way that you can find the greatest common factor every time. The first thing to understand is what is a greatest common factor? We also call it GCF. If you remember in the last section, we talked about how to find the factors of a number. And that's basically just finding a list of all the numbers that will divide in to whatever number we're talking about evenly. So when we find the greatest common factor, we're going to be trying to figure out the largest factor between two given numbers. I know that sounds like a hard thing, but I'll promise you it's not. So the greatest common factor is called the, great, the GCF. It's called the greatest common factor. So we know we have to find factors and we're trying to find the greatest one that's common between two things. So the name of this thing is very descriptive. It actually is telling you exactly what it is. So the easiest way to do this is by example. So if I want to find the greatest common factor between, you're usually finding the greatest common factor between two numbers. So in this case, between the numbers 9 and 6. Let's say I want to find the greatest common factor between these two numbers. All I have to do is find the factors and make a list of the factors of this number and make a list of the factors of this number and I'm going to have two lists of numbers, the factors of each one of those and I'm just trying to find the greatest, the largest one that's common to both of those lists. That's all I'm trying to do. So the way you handle it is you say alright, you put the number 9 here Put a little dash. Now let's list the factors, and this is exactly how we did it in the last section. The factors of 9 are 1, because 1 will divide into 9. 2 is not a factor, it will not go into 9, but 3 is a factor. 4 is not a factor, 5 is not a factor, 6 is not a factor, 7 and 8 are not factors because none of those numbers can divide into 9. But the number 9 is a factor because it can divide into itself evenly. And then what we'll do is we'll look at the number 6 because that's the other number that we're asked to look at and find these factors. 1 is always a factor. In this case, 2 is a factor because 2 will divide into 6. 3 is also a factor because it will divide into 6. 4 is not a factor. 5 is not a factor. But 6 is a factor because it will also divide uh, in there evenly. So now we have two lists of numbers. These are the factors of the number 9. These are the factors of, of the number 6. And then all we do is we circle the greatest one, the largest one, that's common to both of these lists. In that case, we have the number 3. All right? In that case, we have the number 3. So what you would write for your answer would be 3 is the greatest common factor. That's all you need to write down. So if you have a test or a quiz or a worksheet and it says find the greatest common factor between these two numbers, the only thing you have to do is do this work. This is the answer. The number three is the greatest common factor. It is the largest number that is a factor of both of those original numbers that I'm looking for, that I'm looking at. So let's say I want to find the greatest common factor between the numbers eight and 10. So I want to look at the factors of both of these numbers and then I want to pick the one that's common to both and that is large, the largest. So for the number 8 we list the factors. 1 is always a factor. 2 is a factor because it will divide into 8. 3 is not a factor. It will not divide into 8. But 4 is a factor. It will divide in there. 5 is not a factor. 6 is not a factor. 7 is not a factor but 8 is a factor. So these numbers 5, 6, and 7, they can't be divided into 8, and so they're not factors. So here we look at the number 10, and we list these factors. 1 is always a factor. 2 is a factor because 2 times 5 is 10. It can divide in there. 3 is not a factor. 4 is not a factor. But 5 is a factor because it can divide into 10 evenly. 6, 7, 8 and 9, none of those are factors because they can't divide into 10. But finally you'll get to the number 10 and this is a factor because it can divide into the number 10 uh, one time, an even number of times, without any remainder. So then what we do is we look and figure out what is the greatest number, the largest common number 
Number two is the largest number that's common to both of these lists. So the answer is two is the greatest common factor. And again, that's all you're trying to do. You're trying to find out what number is common and is the greatest one that is a factor of both of those original numbers that I care about. So this is an important topic when we get on into uh, more fraction work here in just a little bit. So we'll get a little more practice and say, what is the greatest common factor between 12 and 18, between these numbers here? Okay, and so what we'll do is we'll just do it the same way. We'll list the number 12. Now let's go a little more rapid fire because we've done some of this before. What are the factors of 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Those are all the factors because 1 can divide into 12, 2 can divide into 12, 3 can divide into 12, 4 can divide into 12, 5 cannot divide into 12, so we don't list it, 6 times 2 is 12, so it behaves in there, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, none of those can divide into 12 evenly, so we leave them off the list, and of course the number itself is always in our list because it can divide in. And now we look at 18. So you see some of these numbers can actually have quite a few factors. The, the number 18, 1 can divide in there, 2 can divide in there because 2 times 9 is 18, 3 can divide in there because 3 times 6 is 18, 4 is not a factor because it doesn't divide, 5 is not a factor, but 6 is a factor because 6 times 3 is 18, 7 and 8, neither one of those can divide in evenly, but the number 9 can divide in because 9 times 2 is 18, and then when you keep going, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, none of those numbers can divide in evenly into 18, except for the very last one, which is the number itself, the number 18. So that is, uh, that is there. So what we're going to do then is look at our list and figure out what are the common factors and what's the greatest common factor. So we see right away, the number one is a common factor. It means it's common to both lists, but it's not the largest one. 2 is a common factor to both lists. 3 is a common factor to both lists. Um, 4 is up here, but there is no 4 down here, so it's not common. Um, so we keep going. We see that we have two 6s here. The, that is common to both lists, and there's no number bigger than that that's common to both of those. So we say that 6, the number 6, is the greatest common factor. All right, so we, we know what we're trying to point out here is that we have common factors. One is a common factor, two is a common factor, three is a common factor, but they're not the greatest common factor because the greatest common factor is the one that's the largest number that's in both of these lists. So that's what that is. Now for our last example, what I'd like to do is try to find the greatest common factor between the numbers seven and the number 21. So we want to find the greatest common factor. So the first thing we do is we list the number 7 and we try to list all of the factors of the number 7. So 1 of course is a factor because 1 can divide into 7, but 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6, none of those guys are factors because you can't divide them into 7. So the only other number that works is the number itself because 7 can be divided into 7. So these two numbers can be multiplied together to give us uh, the number 7. So they're factors. Now the other number that we were given, the number 21, let's go ahead and try to find what the factors of uh, this number is. So for the number 21, the number 1 is a factor. When you start looking, the number 2 is not a factor because 2 times anything cannot give you 21. But when you look at the number 3, 3 times 7 is 21, so this guy can be multiplied by something to give us 21, so that's a factor. And then you start going up 4, 5, and 6, those aren't factors, but the number 7 can be divided into 21, so that one works. And then if you keep marching, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up, the only other factor you're going to find is the number itself, 21, because 21 can be divided into itself. And so we look and we try to find the greatest factor that's common to both of these lists. And we find that the number 7 is the largest factor that works. So 7 is the GCF, the greatest common factor. So don't forget what you're trying to do. When you're trying to find the greatest common factor, what you need to do is to find the factors of the first number and then find the factors of the second number. And all you're trying to do is identify common factors and you're looking for the one that's the largest. In this case, 
One is a common factor between these two numbers, but it's not the largest one. Seven is the one that's the largest. And remember, when you're trying to find factors in the first place, there's two ways to think about it, and they're really, really the same thing. Uh, one way to think about it is when you're looking for factors, you're trying to find numbers that can be divided in evenly into the number you're after. So one can be divided into 21, three can be divided into 21, seven can be divided into 21, and 21 can be divided into 21. And that's the way I like to think about it. But the other way to think about it is kind of the opposite because multiplication and division are, are kind of opposites of one another. Uh, another way to think of factors is factors are numbers that, that can be multiplied together to give you the original number you have. So notice we have one, uh, excuse me, one times 21 will give us 21, three times seven will give us 21. So you're trying to find pairs of numbers that will multiply together to give you the original number. So however you like to think about it, I like to think about can it be divided in, can it be divided in, and those are your factors. If you just like to try to find pairs of numbers that can be multiplied together to give you 21 or whatever number you're after, that's fine too. But in any case, to find the greatest common factor, list them all out for both numbers and look for the greatest one that's common to both. I'm Jason with ScienceandMath.com. I hope you've enjoyed